the greatest hot hatch of all time. Many will go with the Volkswagen Golf GTI. And certainly in guys one and Mark two, they were at the pinnacle of hot hatches. Even if they went a little bit less GTI and more GT during the Mark three and Mark four. But in 2004, Volkswagen released the Mark V and that brought the GTI back to Volkswagen. And this week, we're lucky enough that my son Archie has picked up this Mark V GTI and not just a standard one, but an Edition 30. And I can't wait to drive it. Welcome to this week's Fast and Fun. So the Mark 5 GTI, built between 2004 and 2009, powered by a four-cylinder, two-litre turbo, delivering a shade under 200 brake horsepower. We had to wait two years, and then in 2006, very late 2006, early 2007, they brought out the Edition 30. And this was the one to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the GTI. And there's a few cosmetic changes, but the main change was the forged engine had a KO4 turbo over the standards KO3. And that increased power from or by 30 brake horsepower and lifted it to 230 brake horsepower. Front wheel drive came in either three door or five door hatch. This specific one's the, the three door. And the Edition 30 also came with a few other tweaks. Plus, this one has been modified. So, an Archie's bought this only in the last few weeks, and I can't wait to drive it. They did come as manual or DSG. This is the DSG gearbox, and having owned my Mark 1 TT 3.2 VR6 that came with the DSG gearbox, for me, for this period in the mid noughties it was the DSG gearbox, the twin clutch system was a revelation. For me, it was the best gearbox out there at the time. But this is not standard. It's had a few light sprinkling of modifications. And Archie is going to take us all through them. So Archie, just run through then. What are the main differences between the standard GTI and the Edition 30 GTI? So the big difference is, is the uh, KO4 turbo, which you get on the Edition 30 standard, uh, compared to the normal uh, Mark 5 GTI, and, and you get the KO3, which in remapping terms, and you can get a lot more power out of the KO4, um, and then you can over the KO3. So. Yeah, because it's only 30 pro brake, house, brake horsepower more, yep. but it does allow remapping far more flexibility in remapping yep. potential, doesn't yep. it? Okay. okay. What, what else, uh, uh, Archie? Um, and you get the Vortex front splitter, Okay. Uh, and you get the colour coded side skirts and rear bumper with it too. Uh, some rear tinted lights. And obviously, you get these 18 inch BBS uh, and Pascari alloys on them as well, which is completely standard on these. And they are specific to the Edition 30? Yeah, I think so, yeah. They do really look great, actually. And I think yeah. the, the suit, the, the, this um, black metallic paintwork as well, it really brings the best out of those. Yeah. Um, anything else? There's a few logos and stuff, isn't there? There's a few badges inside and out, really, which uh, makes the car, you know, a lot better, I think, personally. And are they numbered, the cars, or not? Yes, they are numbered. Because I did read numbered, somewhere yeah. that originally the Volkswagen had said 1,500, but they ended up building nearly 2,300 of these. Um, both in three-door, five-door as well. Yeah, this and, is three-door, but... Yeah, and DSG and manual. Um, we did have a look yesterday on how many is left, and surprisingly, there's more manuals than DSG. Yeah. But when you come to look at buying, the DSG seem to be higher value than the manuals, and I thought it would be the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then values of the Edition 30 compared to the, the base GTI for what is largely 30 brake horsepower more and a few cosmetics. They command quite a premium, don't they, over the standards? Yeah, it's pretty much double the price, I think. Wow. For a decent one, I think it's pretty much double the price. But so, but uh, this isn't standard, is it? No, this is not standard, obviously. So, I bought it. let's have a walk around the car, pick out... There's a couple of really neat features on this car, actually. 
uh, we'll pick out some of each features. Arch is going to tell us what mods have been done to it, and then we'll take it out on some of my favourite roads. So, what are the first mods then on this car, Archer? And you've bought it already modified, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have, yes. So, start at the front. So, we have got some um, 8V S3 brakes on it. Um, and we've got some lowering springs, which I'm not too sure which lowering springs they are. But they're on standard yeah. dampers and yes, suspension. They are, yeah, it's just, it's just lowered. Yeah. Yep. And we've got 15mm uh, spacers on the front and 30mm spacers on the rear. Yeah, and actually, it doesn't, they look about right now, so they must have been really recessed before the spacers got fitted. Um, braking, what's the braking like with these? It is very sharp, I think, personally. I think compared to the Fabio SL. So. Yeah, because obviously Archer's come from a Skoda Fabio VRS. Yeah. So, um, and, and from using diesel torque to now you've got it's the power, which we'll come on to what this is running shortly. So, and I just, I love those these um, Piscari alloys, these BBS alloys, and the, the red centre caps, they just, they just look so specific. Okay, um, what else, Archie? So at the back then, Archie, we've got um, exhaust is clearly not standard. No. Nope. And I know that from the fact mm. that when Archie starts the car, but what is the exhaust? So we've got a, uh, a track slag downpipe with a BCS um, cap back which is quite loud, really. Quite loud. Very loud. This is, I like loud cars, but they've got to have a sort of purpose to them. This yeah. is, I think, bordering too loud, or do you, do you love it? I mean, don't get me wrong, I do love it, but it, it is probably better if I get a valve fitted, especially for the motorway as well, because it's very droney. Yeah, and that's one of them, because we did have a motorway drive in it, didn't we? Yeah. And it's just... It's just uh, right in your ear all, if it's all that, time. It resonates at a certain frequency, at a certain RPM, yeah. and it's it can become really, really tiresome. Yeah. Um, and because it's not valved, you can't switch it open no. on and off, you see. Um, one thing I did spot, which I've never seen on another car, is I just open the bonnet. Bonnet, boot, is under the parcel shelf, there's this um, stretchy... Oh, let's just try to get it off cover here for putting. I don't know what it is, books, paperwork. Not too sure. Things that, but I've never seen it on a parcel shelf in any car that I've reviewed on the channel. And I thought, what a, what a um, really good idea. So let's have a look at the business end, the engine. Yeah. And let's talk about what's been done to the engine and what power it's kicking out. So in the engine bay then, Archie, it's only had subtle changes, so just yeah. want to go through what's been so done. So obviously it's got this big um, Revo induction kit. Uh, yeah. It was put on by Revo itself. Um, and, it, and, and it has got a stage one remap by um, Artec. Right, okay, so running what sort of power then on, is it? On the dyno it pushed 290 bhp with 330 foot pounds. Okay, so that's a I'll talk, so. that's a really nice comparable yeah. amount of power. That so yeah. Um, okay, so Next. that's what about um, yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, this was all fitted after the remap, so it had a new exhaust and had this and that shit, and was all fitted after the remap. So and so you might be pushing through yeah. closer to three hundred. Yeah, then. yeah. So I reckon I will, and it had a brand new K four turbo in, in August. Right. By so, by the previous owner. Yes, yes, by okay. a special company. So I think it'll be pushing around French. Okay. Put it on a dyno, yeah. It seems to pull very well. Yeah, and obviously this for me, and it's probably a video that I would love to do in the next few weeks or month or two, is for the price that Arch has paid for this, in and around 8,000, which seems to be the sort of yeah. mid-range for the edition yeah. 30s, and this has got 109,000 miles on, yeah. which is respectable for a, what is it, an 08? 08 car, 08. Uh, 08 plate, yeah. so it's 16 years old this year. Um, I want to put this against Megane RS 250, and my mind's standard, so this mine will not stay in a straight line with this, but Megane's coming to the corner, so that'll be a cracking 
I think, battle between Megane RS and Edition 30 Mark V GTI. Um, and there's no cover on this, is there? No. No, it's Re not. Reason? Because it doesn't fit with the induction kit on. Ah, okay, got you. Okay, so the Revo induction kit, so you've had to just take, um, it, out. take it off. Okay. So. Cool. Uh, and I've just, again, the styling, the honeycomb front grille um, of the GTI. It, it's the classic GTI look for me. Let's have a quick look inside, which I think that's pretty much... Standard. Standard edition all, 30. All so standard, yeah. Let's have a quick look inside. All right, and guys, so here we got the uh, GTI seats. I, I absolutely love them. Honestly, I think it's one of the big parts I've bought one of these because they are so comfortable. So the half leather, half tartan stitching, yeah. stitching red, red stitching. I think that was an e edition 30. Um, tartan, I believe, um, and the GTI badging on the headrest as well. Yeah. Reminiscent of GTIs, Volkswagens, Porsches, all from the sort of 80s, 90s era. Yeah. These absolutely love, obviously, the SG, so, you know. We'll talk more about that on the yeah, drive, because it's got Sport as well in there. As, um, yeah, it has, yeah. Uh, and you can see on the side of the door, there's the uh, number, what it is. Yeah, so this one's 1958. So it's a good job they uh, opened up the limitation from 1500, otherwise this car wouldn't actually exist. Um, yeah. And otherwise, it's pretty much standard Mark V Golf. And it's a nice place to be, isn't it? If you compare yeah. this to, as I say, Drawing comparison to the Megan, yeah. it's just such a more premium place. I agree. What about the rear seats? Let's have a quick and look. The rear seats are literally like new. I don't think many people have really been back there, so they're pretty much like new. And being a three door, I suppose, it means harder. that it, it, well, it'll be less likely to be known by young families, etc. Yeah. Really clean, really tidy. Right, let's get it on the road. Okay, here we go for the drive. Um, oh, these seats are, I sit really low, um, nice and grippy on my thighs and on my sort of ribs. Um, nice, simple layout, rev counter on the left, speedo on the right with, the, with your coolant and fuel below and then the red instrument cluster in the centre of the uh, display. Centre console, it's typical VAG of the period, it's, it's functional, it looks quite well built and, and well made. And then the DSG gearbox has got the, the golf ball effect to, to hold on to. So um, let's uh, start it up. Volkswagen Information Systems, six speed DSG gearbox this is. So let's start her up. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a very, very loud, cold start, booming exhaust on this, and we'll have to see how we get on with that. Um, clearly, it's probably not necessarily my my age group that's going to be really into that really now noisy and obnoxious, perhaps, um, loudness. Really bassy it is at the moment, and you can hear that in the cabin, although it's probably worse outside. Um, so... Uh, yeah, nice place to be. I think we need to take this out, warm the car up, and then see what this car drives like. Join me in a few miles. <laughs> 